In the last lecture, we learned about what is value type and what is reference type in JavaScript. Now in this lecture, let's try to understand value type and reference type with some examples. Now here, we are going to have a look at some examples where without the knowledge of value and reference type, it will be difficult for you to understand the result of that code. So let's go to VS Code. And the first example which we are going to take here is, we are going to create a variable x, let's assign it with the value 30, and let's create another variable y, and let's also assign it with the value 30. Now here, let's go ahead and let's write a console.log statement, and there we want to check if x is equal to equal to y. Now what do you think will be the result of this expression? So here, the value of x is 30, and the value of y is also 30, and this 30 is a number, which is a primitive type, and we have learned that primitive types are value types. So in case of value type, the value is what gets stored in the variable. So here this x is storing 30 and y is storing 30. So when we are going to compare the value of x and y, since both of them are storing a value type, their values will be compared. And here both the values are same. So if you save the changes, you can see it is logging true. Now, Let's go ahead and let's create another variable. Let's call it obj1. So here I'm going to create an object. And in that object, I'm only going to have an age property. And let's say age is 28. Then let me also create another variable, obj2. And to this also, we are going to assign the same object. And now again, let's say console.log. And let's compare obj1 with obj2. Now, what do you think will be the result in this case? Now remember that obj1 and obj2 are storing objects and objects are reference types. So in this obj1, a reference of this object will be stored. And in this obj2, a reference of this object will be stored. And here, the references will be compared. Okay, so if I save the changes here, you will see that the result is false. Now why is that? Because both obj1 and obj2 are storing identical objects. Then why we are seeing this result false? That's because since obj1 and obj2 are of reference type, their values will not get compared. Their references will get compared. Let's try to understand these two examples diagrammatically. So this is the first example. Here what we are doing, we are creating a variable x and we are assigning it with the value 30. Now 30 is a value type, so it will be created and stored in the stack memory. And this variable x, it is an identifier which will point to that memory address. So here x is storing this value 30. Then we are also creating this variable y. And to that also we are assigning this value 30. So again, this value 30 will again get stored in stack memory. And this y will point to that stack memory where that another value 30 is stored. Here you see we are assigning different values. I mean the values are same. but we are not saying y equal to x. If we say y equal to x, then this y will also point to the same value which x is storing. But here, we are initializing them separately with a value. So that's why for these two values, it will be created two times in the memory. x will point to this value 30 and y will point to another value 30. Both of them are stored somewhere in the memory. And now when we are comparing x equal to equal to y, since x and y are value types, their value will be compared. So 30 equal to 30, it will return true. And that's why for this result, we are seeing true. Now let's take example of reference type. So in here, what will happen? We are creating this obj1 and to that we are assigning an object. Object is of reference type. So it will be created and stored in heap memory. Let's say it is stored at this memory address. And in this stack memory, there will be a reference for that heap memory. And obj1 will point to that memory address. So for this obj1, we are not directly storing this object. Instead, we are storing the memory address of that object from the heap memory. Then we are creating this obj2. And to that also, we are assigning an object. Now this object, when we are assigning it again, here again, we are not saying obj2 equal to obj1. Otherwise, both obj2 and obj1 will point to the same object. But here, using these curly braces, we are creating a new object. 
So this new object is again going to be created in the heap memory. Even though both these objects look identical, but since we are creating them separately, they will be created and stored in the heap memory. And again, for this heap memory, there will be a reference in the stack memory and obj2 is pointing to that reference. So when we are comparing obj1 with obj2, what is the value of obj1 in the stack memory? It is a reference. It is a memory address. And for obj2 also, the value is a memory address, a reference. So now these two memory addresses, these two references will be compared when we say obj1 equal to equal to obj2. So the reference of obj1, which is this, is different from the reference of obj2, which is this. And that's why in this case, the result will be false. I hope you understood this point. Now let's take another example. So now what I will do is I'll say, let obj3 equals obj2. So now obj3 and obj2 will point to the same memory address because now we are copying the reference, the address from obj2 to obj3. So both of them are going to store the same reference. And in this case, if we do the comparison, if we do the equality check for obj2 and obj3, in this case, it will return true. If I save the changes, you see it is returning true. Now, why is that? Let's again try to understand it diagrammatically. So again, we are creating this obj3 and we are assigning it with obj2. So an identifier called obj3 will be created and it will point to the same memory address. So it will have the same value, right? Because from the obj2, what is stored in this obj2? It is storing a memory address and that memory address will be assigned to this obj3 also. So now both obj2 and obj3 are pointing to the same memory address. So both of them, for both of them, the value is same. It is this memory address. And that's why when we are comparing them now, when we say obj3 equal to obj2, so here it should be obj3. So when we say obj3 equal to obj2, since the reference is same, it is going to return true in this case. So let me change this to obj3. Okay, so here it should be obj3 equal to obj2. So for both obj3 and obj2, its value is same. Its value is this memory address. And that's why when we are doing the comparison, the equality check, since both of them are storing the same reference, it is going to return true. So in this example, if you don't have a knowledge of value type and reference type, you might think that obj1 is equal to obj2. So this expression should return true, right? If you don't have the knowledge of value type and reference type, if you are a complete beginner and you don't know value type and reference type, then you might think that this expression should return true. But when it returns false, you might get confused. And that's why understanding value type and reference type is very important. Let's take another example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array. I'll call it array1 and to this let's assign an array with some value, some numeric value maybe 10, 20 and 30. Okay, now let me create another variable array2 and to this I'm going to assign array1. So here what I want is I want to create a copy of this array1 and I want to store it in array2. So for that what I did, I assigned this array1 to this array2. Now in this array2, I want to make some changes. So what I want is in this array2, I want to add some more elements. For that, I'm going to use the push method on that array. And let's say I also want to add 40 and 50 there. Okay. And I want to make this change only in array2. I don't want to change array1 here. That's why I have created this copy. Now, if I go ahead and if I log array2, so let's say console.log ARR2, if I save the changes, that array has been logged and there we also have two new elements, 40 and 50. So this is okay. Now, let's also go ahead and let's log array1. And if I save the changes, you will see that for array1 also, 
this 40 and 50 has been added. We only added 40 and 50 elements to array 2, but that has also been added for array 1. So when we are logging array 1, we see the same array which we see for array 2. Both of them are logging the same array. Now why is that? I only pushed these two elements in array 2, not in array 1. But still, when I'm logging array 1, there also I can see those two elements pushed. Now, why is that? Let's again try to understand it diagrammatically. So again, here we have the same code. What we are doing here is we are creating an array. Now, we have already learned that array are also reference types. And a reference type gets stored in the heap memory. So let's say in the heap memory, at this address, this array is stored. And for this heap memory, there will be a reference in the stack memory. So an identifier called ARR1 will be created, which will point to that heap memory. So it is going to store this memory address as its value in the stack memory, right? Now we are creating ARR2 and to that we are assigning ARR1. Now what is the value of ARR1? It is storing a reference. It is storing a memory address. So this memory address will be copied to ARR2 also. So both ARR1 and ARR2 is now storing the same reference. Now, when we are trying to push these two elements to ARR2, which array this ARR2 is pointing to? It is pointing to this array, right? So when we are pushing 40 and 50, it is going to be pushed to this same array. So there, we will also have 40 and 50 added to that array. And ARR1 is also pointing to the same array. So when we have added 40 and 50 using this ARR2 by pushing elements to this ARR2, it is going to affect the same array which ARR1 is also pointing to. And that's why we made changes using ARR2. But that change is also reflecting in ARR1. And that's why when we are logging ARR1 or ARR2, we are seeing the same array logged which has 40 and 50 elements also. Okay, so when we use this line where we are assigning array stored in ARR1 to this variable ARR2, it is not actually creating a copy. It is basically both ARR1 and ARR2 are pointing to the same array. There is no copy which has been created. Instead, both these identifiers both these variables are pointing to the same array. And that's why when we change the array using one variable, let's say ARR2, that same change is reflecting in ARR1 also because both of them are pointing to same array. Okay, this line here, it has not created a copy of this array. Instead, both of these variables are now pointing to the same array. And that's why at this line, when we are logging ARR1 and ARR2, both of them are logging same array. So changing ARR2 has also changed ARR1 because both of them are pointing to the same array. Now what I will do is, so after we have assigned this ARR1 to this ARR2, what I will do is I'll simply say ARR1 equals some new array. Now here what will happen is, Earlier, this ARR1 was pointing to this array at some memory address. Now, we are assigning a new array to this ARR1. So, this new array will be created at a new memory address in heap memory. So, now this ARR1 is pointing to a new array. It is no more pointing to this array. So, now what will happen is, when we are pushing these two elements to ARR2, it will only push it to this array. But, ARR1 will not get affected because now ARR1 and ARR2 are pointing to two different arrays. It is pointing to two different memory addresses in the heap memory. If I save the changes, you see for the ARR2, this array has been logged and for ARR1, it is logging empty array because this ARR1, it is an empty array. And the reason is that since we have assigned a new array to ARR1, now it has been created at some different memory address. So now ARR2 and ARR1 are not pointing to same array. It is not pointing to same memory address. So these two examples which I have given, if you don't understand value type and reference type, you might get confused why you are getting some unexpected result. 
and this is the reason why you should understand what is value type and reference type and how value type and reference type works and when you know these things then you can avoid a lot of bugs in your javascript program and now since you know what is value type and reference type and how they work and how they behave now you can avoid these type of bugs in your program all right now before i wrap up this lecture let's also see one more example so here we have obj1 and obj2 let's say in the obj1 we have this age property let me also go ahead and let me create an age variable okay and to this let's assign 28 okay and let's try to compare so maybe at this line what i'll do is i'll write another console.log statement and there i'll try to compare the value stored in this age variable with the age property of obj1 now what do you think will be the result in this case let's see that so if i save the changes you will see true is logged now why is that that's because this age is a value type so in the age variable we are storing 28 and 28 is a value type so this age variable is going to store that value 28 then this age property of this obj1 this obj1 is a reference type because it is storing an object but in that object we have this age property which is storing a value type it is storing a number which is a value type so here when we are comparing this age variable with obj1 dot age this age property is storing a value so here the values will be compared because this age property also is storing a value right so here the values will be compared and when the values will be compared 28 will be equal to 28 and that's why it is returning true in simple terms here the value is what is being compared and not the reference not the memory address and that's why both of them has the same value so it is returning true all right so i hope from this lecture and from the last lecture now you have a good understanding of what is value type and what is reference type and how value type and reference type works if you have any questions related to value type and reference type then feel free to ask it now in the next lecture we are going to learn about pass by value and pass by reference basically to a function we can pass a value or we can also pass a reference and that concept is also very much related to value type and reference type so before going to that lecture you first need to understand value type and reference type then only you will be able to understand pass by value and pass by reference so i'll highly recommend you to go through this lecture and the previous lecture before going to the next lecture if you have not understood value type and reference type already this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day